Today I've got Adam on again on the channel. Um, he's been on a few times on my podcast and uh, the reason I've got him on again is because I made a video recently um, kind of recording myself doing niche research for trending niches and that seemed to do really well. You really enjoyed it. So I thought let's do the same with evergreen niches and there's no one better to ask really about this than Adam because he's got a ton of content on his channel about finding evergreen niches with free methods. That's the great part so uh, anyone can follow along with this. Uh, first of all, thanks for Adam for coming onto the channel. Of course, Philip. I love coming on your channel. Thanks for having me. Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking forward to this. And first of all, what do people need? Which tools or browser plugins in order to uh, follow along or use the same technique as you? Yeah, so we're going to use totally free tools here. Um, obviously, you need a browser. We're going to primarily be searching on Amazon directly, on Amazon.com. Um, as far as Chrome extensions, there's there's two main Chrome extensions that we need. Uh, the first one is going to be AMZ Suggestion Expander, um, which is going to give you a more detailed result in the search bar here. Um, so you can get that at the Chrome store. And then the other one is something that's going to show the BSR. So you can use, um, what is it, DS Amazon yeah, Quick that's View? that's the one. Or alternatively, Producta for Merch by Amazon. It, it also shows you the BSR. Um, which we, we yeah. need in order to see is something selling well or is it is it selling badly? What do you think of research tools in, in general? Because you, you mainly seem to push like the free methods. Um, obviously, there's like a million different ways to find niches, but have you ever used them? Yeah. Are you against them? I definitely yeah. have used them. I, I absolutely have used them. And, you know, I, I have no problem with research tools. The thing is, you know, just how I think about things is all of those research tools, they're getting this, the data from Amazon.com. Mm. So it's all there. It's just these research tools what, where I think they excel is they put it in a way that's a little bit more organized, yeah. right? They give you some filtering features and, and present the, the data into a comprehensive way, right? Um, the downside of that is that sometimes that is shown to many, many people, right? The same way, like everyone's going to see the best sellers on that same page. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, depending if you're searching for a 100,000 BSR or below, these tools are often going to show the same things. Not that that's a good or a bad thing, but when you're just kind of organically hunting on Amazon, you sometimes can find your way into these areas that tools overlook or simply don't show. So I just kind of like that. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. It's a little bit more organic. You know, you're stumbling around, you're brainstorming. And, and for me, that just works. But, you know, for, for someone that wants something in a more, you know, categorized, detailed way for your filter, then there's plenty of tools out there that do a fantastic job. Yeah, on. yeah. I definitely agree with that. Like uh, tools, research tools, they make the data more easy to digest. Uh, they also help with filtering yeah. out branded products, for example, which you don't get that during the free right. research. But yeah, I think majority of people use them in the same manner, whereas they're just looking at the best sellers because it's sorted by BSR, mm -hmm. right? And they're just, everyone's looking at the same stuff. You kind of have to use them in a specific way to get unique ideas. And you can, you can find yeah. different niches through the free methods that you might not find on a, on a research tool and vice versa. Um, so they both have their place, right. but I mean, for beginners, I would definitely say like start off with the free stuff. It's, it's great. Yeah. So yeah, the goal of the video um, is going to be finding some low competition evergreen niches um, because that's what, well, that's what I personally mostly get my sales in. I'm guessing it's the same for you or do you, do you ever chase trends? Yeah. I, I mean, I would say 90% of what I research and upload is evergreens. And, you know, when I first started, it was more trends and holidays, mm -hmm. you know, um, cause there is a time and a place when those can, you can make a lot of money in a short amount of time or get some sales, but no, I think evergreen is, is yeah. Most people who have been in the business for a while, I say, I would say that evergreen makes up the majority of their portfolio. So I love evergreens, mm. love them. Would you say there's a, there's a time and place for training in niches or they're just kind of pointless? No, I definitely think there's a time and a place. Um, you know, I think if you're in maybe some of the lower tiers and you're trying to tear up and get some sales, you're not necessarily worried about trying to, you know, put money into your bank account, a, a hot trend or something that's new and viral or an event that's, you know, very unique, like mm. the eclipse that we just had. That's a trend is an example that I jumped on because I mean, it's literally once in a lifetime, you know? Um, but uh, so, so some trends, yeah, I do think there's a time and a place. It has to do with your personal print on demand strategy, but 
you know, there's nothing wrong with trends. I just think the evergreen concept, it's just more consistent. And Philip, I'm assuming you're like me, we're in this for the yeah. long run, right? We want to build a portfolio where if I make a shirt, it's going to sell, you know, this summer and next summer and the next summer and next summer and next yeah. summer, right? Not just one time during an event or during a trend. Yeah, I mean, that is one of the main reasons I like print and demand is because it's consistent and trending yeah. niches are not consistent. <laughs> they are definitely there right. for the lower tiers and make sense uh, in a lot of cases, but not for, yeah. if you're getting into like tier 500, like at that point, you should probably mainly focus on evergreen if, if you want a consistent income. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get started yeah. uh, on your screen. Um, what's, what's the first thing you, you typically do when you start your research process? So typically the first thing that I do is just pull up Amazon, right? And um, if I don't really have any direction, like I don't have an idea of even, you know, where I'm gonna go right now, one of the things that I'll do is I'll go to Merch Research, or excuse me, Merch Informer, and click here at the top at Resources and click on Merch Research. This is just, you don't have to have a paid membership or subscription, but you could just basically type in a term here and choose the apparel type. And I'll actually just leave it blank, mm. okay? and just hit search. So now what it's going to do, it's gonna pull up a ton of shirts in a ton of different niches. And it's gonna show me the most popular ones here at the top, which you know we can see already, Star Wars, Mario, we wanna stay away from that. So I'll go up here, instead of sort by featured, I'll sort by newest arrivals. Mm. Now these are shirts that probably haven't sold, but these are, these are new arrivals to this broad niche. And you, you'll see here, we probably have all kinds of different stuff. A lot of them are not gonna apply and not gonna work, but I'll just kind of scroll through some of these just to see if anything jumps out. And I'm looking at the designs, right? But I'm also looking at some of the keywords just to see like, oh, is there something are you, you know, I don't uh, know about? What are you looking for? Is it a specific topic or is it just something new? What, what typically piques your interest or is it just random? Typically what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a new niche to enter. So I'm looking for either something on the shirt that catches my attention or a keyword that I've never searched for and thought of. And if, if I get lucky here, maybe we'll stumble mm. across one and I can show you. Um, yeah. What? Okay. Like this here. Yeah. Whilst you're looking, um, I'll also just mention the reason for you for using that merch informer, uh, research tab is because it filters out just Amazon merch products. If you're going organically to amazon.com, which you can do, um, but you are going to see a lot of third party sellers that don't have prime shipping, um, and you're not really competing with necessarily. And you will also see random products that have nothing to do with print and demand whatsoever. So that's why sometimes using that tab uh, can help make things easier. At least in my opinion. Yeah. Exactly. Um, oh yeah. Have you, have you spotted anything yet or? Not really yet. And you know, the other thing I'm not, I'm really not even looking at BSRs mm. at this level, me personally, right? Because I'm just looking for a topic. And then once I find that topic, I'll search that term specifically. Okay. Here's one. I don't know what this is, but it says, let the Greek mm, fiesta. That's the one I'm, I was looking at as well. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I know nothing about Greek fiestas. I don't know. Is this like a Cinco de Mayo Greek play, you know, but something like that, that catches my mm. attention. So now I see Greek fiesta and Greek Easter Cinco de Mayo. So I'll go back up here to the search search tab and I'll type in Greek, let's see, Greek Cinco. I'll use that AMZ search expander to see what it's telling me, to see if it recommends anything. Um, and actually I'm on novelty and more. At this point, I'll go back to the main Amazon so it's all categories because I find that you'll get better um, search expansion results in the criteria there. Greek. Okay, so look, I typed in Greek and then F-I-E for Fiesta, and I can see right here, Greek Fiesta mm. shirt. Oh, no, that says green Fiesta shirt. Yeah, that's what happens when I don't wear my glasses. But you, you did type in Greek, though, Greek. so it's, <laughs> it's just amended yeah. it to green Fiesta. Yeah, green it Fiesta. did. Greek Feta. What was the other term? It was Greek Cinco de Mayo, yeah. I think. Greek, okay, here we go. Greek Cinco de Mayo, Cinco de Mayo Greek Easter shirts. So I'll type that in. I can see it's saying 690 results. Let's look here. Okay, so I'm assuming 
there's a Greek Easter that takes place the same day as Cinco de Mayo. Is that is that what you're it getting out of this? Must be. I'm just looking on Google on the side monitor. Yeah. Uh, Greek Easter. Yeah, I've I've not seen that either. And Cinco de Mayo is every every year. So would have thought to have seen that beforehand, but haven't. Maybe it's just like a random event. Um, but it has passed as well. The Cinco de Mayo date. It, yeah. Uh, yeah, it has passed, and this is clearly like an event. But some of these are selling. I mean, this is they're using. It's basically cross niching, which a lot of yeah. us talk about, right? Something that's Greek culture related, right? Greek Easter with Cinco de Mayo because those dates overlap. Mm. So, like, this is a clever design. It's got the Mexican style hat, but the Greek flag and the sunglasses. Mm. Well, um, you know, so this is an example. This made this is this is an event that's passed. But this example, I mean, this is a niche that Philip, you and I had never heard yeah, of or yeah. stumbled across you know and maybe it's something i want to just jot to a list and revisit later maybe it's not but what i'll do is i'll just go back and i'll just start the process over again and i'll go to newest arrivals and maybe i'll just scroll for a couple more pages you know go to the next page and see what else i can sort of come yeah. across and it's just kind of rinsing rip repeating this pattern until you find something that you want to okay this looks good i'm ready to you know make mm -hmm. some shirts about it and you are and as in the example there, you are going to find a lot of niches that are not necessarily worth entering because either it's a trend that's passed or maybe it's a, a niche with low demand. Um, you will find more niches that are bad than niches that are good. It's just part of the process. Absolutely. Um, one thing I was going to ask you there is do you ever, because that was Greek Cinco de Mayo, do you ever then maybe mm -hmm. go off of that idea and just look for Greek shirts? Like maybe there's some Greek niches yeah uh, that's what i would have yeah, in that case absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely and actually there was a couple other ones that um i think i might have closed it oh no i didn't there was some other ones here like this this is a mm. i've seen this niche before but it's the my wife is greek nothing scares me that is a great scalable evergreen style niche because you could replace greek with any one of the 192 countries out there, mm -hmm. right? My wife is Italian. My wife is German. My wife is American, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, to your point, Philip, you could, there's a, there's a couple of different areas. You could go down that Cinco de Mayo Greek route and maybe think, start researching other niches that cross niche with Cinco de Mayo, or you could go the Greek route and say, Ooh, I like this. You know, there's a large Greek population. There's you know, there's um, some other some other categories within that in within that subject that we could expand mm, upon. Mm, yeah, and that that design concept you pointed out there that is an evergreen design concept, right? So now you've we've started with a trend and we found a kind mm -hmm. of like a scalable uh, evergreen yep. a phrase idea or niche idea. Um, yeah, and that's a good looking design. I mean. Um, I like the flag. I like the colors. Maybe it's some larger text here at the mm. top, but that's a that's a solid design. It appears to be selling well. It's got some reviews. It's got a good price. That's a whoever's you know that's a great ever that's a great addition to an evergreen portfolio that you could you could scale out many many different ways. You could scale it out with the countries. You could scale it out in the inverse and say nothing scares me. My mm. husband is Greek. Yeah. You know. Um, so you have some options there. Definitely. I just saw another one. Let me see if I can go back and find where was that? Here it is. Para off duty. Para off duty end of the year. Para professional t shirt. Do you see yep, that, Philip? I can see it. Do you know what that is? Para? Well No idea. I think it is um Is it something related to the to the school system in America? That's what I would have guessed anyway, because there's a lot of school School if, it is, if it is, I haven't heard of that. So I just typed in para professional mm -hmm. shirts. Got a lot of results, but oh, yeah. there's definitely end of school year para para professional. Let me Google that. What? Yeah. Why? Am, I've heard the term, but these are clearly very closely related to uh, school. So apparently, a para professional is a title given to individuals in various occupational fields such as education, librarianship, healthcare, engineering, and law. Uh, okay, that doesn't really make it okay. much clearer, but someone with multiple jobs? Or is, is it like an overarching term for 
many different jobs? You know, I'm not sure, but I think it could be, yeah, it's somebody who, who is, who could fall into a couple different type of job positions or not that individual person, but a term that's used for different positions. But you know, this brings up another good point, Philip, because we all know the teacher niche, yeah. right? Absolutely huge, extremely yeah. competitive, right? But this is actually a, an example of how you can enter a niche if you can identify a different type of search term, right? So instead of searching teacher shirt, right, this is obviously related to para teacher or para professional, right? And that's a, <clears throat> that's a keyword that's probably, I'm assuming, going to give you a much uh, more defined and specific, um, you know, ser someone searching for that term. Um, so this would be one that I would add to the list to maybe dive deeper on because I'm seeing mm -hmm. some great BSRs here, 161,000. Um, uh, 61 or 615,000 30, but that's not it doesn't have para in the title of this bond said so yeah that's like a mental if you health scroll up one. back to the top what um, were the search results just out of curiosity uh, 20,000 it's high 20,000 and I'm assuming it's be, it's because it's picking up a lot of the professional mm -hmm. right there's probably that professional shirt is probably let me just try para Let's just see what happens if I search para in the suggestion experience. So you see para shirt, para t-shirts for women. Let's just try para t-shirts. That's gone down to 10,000. So it's less results. Less results, but still you'd, you'd want to find a term or something a little bit more. Okay. Para educator. Do you see that? That's oh, a new term. Right. Para yeah. educator. Let's, so this is what this is just what I would do, and, and Philip, you cut me off if I'm, but I would type in para educator. Okay, look right there. I've never searched hmm. this term, and I'm seeing para educator oh. shirts, gifts, appreciation, bag, bracelet, yeah. right? And lots of suggestions. That, uh, lots of suggestions, which is always a good sign because that tells me there's demand. Maybe not specifically for T-shirts, but there's demand for gifts. There's interest, yeah. you know. So let's type in para educator shirt. Okay, still have a lot of results, still showing um, 10,000 results. But yeah, some killer BSRs, 88,000 here on this one, 28,000 on mm. that one. I feel like this is probably the kind of niche uh, that is more competitive and that's why you see you're doing better with holidays if it's like cross-niched with Cinco de yeah. Mayo or end of school or something along those lines. Like I saw a Nacho yeah. average design before. Um, but personally, I could, seeing the amount of search results, I'd probably not pursue that one, um, which is really, that's interesting. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I wouldn't think twice about jumping in this not because necessarily of the search results, but, but just because, you know, and I think this maybe, you know, Philip mm. maybe depends some on where a particular person is in their merch journey. I know you're in a higher tier. I'm in a higher tier. We, we probably have extra slots, so it wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice about creating 10 designs, you know, 10 thought out well designs that are appealing and, and throwing them up and just letting them do yeah. their thing, even though it is a lot of results. And then if I get one sale, one sale, I'm going back and I'm doubling down on that yeah. niche, That's... you know, but I see your point. This for somebody, especially newer, this is still a lot of competition. You'd, and there probably is a way we could narrow down mm. even more, you know, if we really sat here and, and tried to keep working. Yeah. On it. And, uh, to kind of add to my statement there as well, I wouldn't necessarily put like 10, 20, 30 designs up and focus on this niche. I, I would still add it to like a, a spreadsheet though for scalable designs. So if you're making, say yeah. if you're making scalable designs for uh, retired jobs, like I would, I would still do one for uh, para professionals as well. So it's not like I would never enter the niche, but I don't think I'd put too much right. energy into it. Uh, just judging from the amount of search. Makes results. sense. Um, but yeah, I use the same technique as you. You put up a few shirts. If nothing sells, you just ignore it. If if you get a sale, you know, mm -hmm. okay, probably put more into this. Yeah. Um, so I'm just okay, back now. I'll have a look I, as I well. Back to... See if we can find yeah. something. I just went back and I'm just kind of just scrolling through these. The other, you know, thing I think we've I've talked about, and I know you've talked about, Philip, is the random word mm. generator. Just go into any of these random word generator sites where you can create a list of words, 
and you know just hit that a few times and there may be something that jumps out at you on here that you know you may think ooh that that might be an evergreen term you know and then you go back yeah in I've had and, sales in forestry for example uh, I saw that one I see I saw that and I, I mean I know that that yeah there's definitely forestry that's an industry um, so let's see what it pulls up we type in forestry shirt 10,000 results we're at the broadest level though that's just like a very basic term I mean there's many different types of uh, forestry disciplines and, and areas you could go let's try and find a sub niche then um, yeah may the forest be with you <laughs> what do you think of that design mm -hmm. I mean obviously that's a that's a Star Wars play it's clever I love it I personally wouldn't do that on my account just because I don't even want to give them a chance to <laughs> you know catch me in some we're kind on the, of we're on the same page know, then uh, because some people would argue it's um it's satire and it, it's allowed yeah. it's satire and parody and it might be they might have a point it might be I just me personally I just you know there's just play it safe whilst you're uh, there you know go back up um, um, there was one example of a potential sub niche there a forestry a school graduation like a graduate on the left on that tank top um ah, here. obviously yes. specific to the year right. 2024 which doesn't make it very evergreen, yep. but generally you could look at forestry, like graduation or yeah. maybe yeah, future, like future, what's even the job title? Foresters? <laughs> forestry grad squad. And that had a lot less results. Uh, major forestry. Yeah, that had uh, 173 results, so very low. Hmm. Here's a forestry major. Okay, that's got a decent BSR. That's a that's an evergreen. It's not tied to a year, yeah. but you know, somebody who's graduating in a, with a degree in forestry. I think this is a niche. You know, from what I'm seeing, based on just what we're looking at, there's probably not a huge demand for this. But the results are very, very. The competition is minimal. You know, um, this I would consider a pretty you know forestry student or forestry graduation. I'm only seeing handful of designs that are specifically for that mm. you know but not a lot of not a really strong um yeah demand. not too much interest so again it's like you just got to keep yeah. moving through them you know it's probably another one where i wouldn't really want to put too much time into it uh, well, yeah. i yeah. am seeing quite a few owls though like owls plus forestry for some reason but again the bsrs are not that impressive so just a pattern that I noticed. All right, back to the drawing board. Do you always sort by? Do you always sort by newest when you look through these? Not always, but I have found that when you sort by like featured, for example, that a lot of those are um, trademarks. Yeah. Though. Yeah. But no, I mean you can mix up with any of these. You could search by you know customer reviews. Um, it's just shuffling the deck, you know what I mean? Ooh. So that hopefully you you get a card, or not a card, <laughs> you get a shirt that, uh, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? That, that What's this peanut the one at the top? What you're looking for. I noticed that earlier. Very, that? At the very top, there was something with peanuts, and it had a, I think it had a BSR, considering it's like the newest. Yeah. Uh, it's called a... It says, it's called a Pequan, not a pecan. Okay, I know what this is about, I pronunciation think. of that. Yeah, it's just a human. Okay, so this is this is targeting a pastry That's chef. That's interesting. I've never seen that keyword. Looks like. Um, so yeah, it's like is it pronounced pecan or mm. pecan? That's like a Southern American thing. It's like pecan or pecan. I can't even say. It. I don't know how to say. So it the what right I'm way. thinking now is like, is this just a social media trend? Maybe that people are like sharing mm -hmm. videos like this, but. Um, we've got multiple potential like evergreen topics there. Uh, we've got pecan, right? The nut. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there's pecan lovers. <laughs> and then we also had, mm -hmm. uh, what was the p pastry chef? The pastry chef. Mm -hmm. mm, yep. Which, yeah, I've never thought about that. But it's, it's a specific type of chef. Which is always a good sign. Okay, yeah. I typed in pastry chef shirt and we're only at 604 results. Good. All right. And yeah, um, and there are some decent BSRs some at first BSRs. glance. Pastry chef yeah. on the right, and you are probably going to get 
like some results pulled in just for general chef designs. Exactly. Yeah, like this one here. Um, you know, be nice. I cook your food, mm. right? That could obviously apply to many different kinds of chefs. Or I bake people happy. That can mm. be obviously more than just a pastry chef. And that's the cool thing about some of these niches. It's like, you know, an ideal world. You create a design that's targeted to a specific niche and audience, right? But there's some fringes of that audience that might still like that shirt, you know, a regular chef or just somebody who likes to bake at home. Even though the keyword I'm using is pastry chef in the description, you know, you might get some some sales. I wish Amazon gave us more data to see like, ooh, what did the per customer search for yeah. that they went and bought that shirt? I mean, imagine if we had access to that, you know? Yeah, because you, you kind of get that with ads, don't you? You can dig into it. Uh, but, yeah, but that's only if you're running yeah, ads so on that free. particular shirt. <laughs> but you made a good point yeah, there exactly. about kind of the layers of niches and sometimes mm -hmm. like the, the broad niche here would be chef or baking maybe. And if you go down a few layers and target a pastry chef, like a specific application mm -hmm. of chefs um, or a specific type of baking, whatever it may be, um, you're going to have a obviously a smaller audience that are interested in this, but because there's less competition, it's easier for, for you to make a sale. And if the design applies to other chefs as well, you might be in this bottom layer of results, but you can also be found afterwards once you get sales in the, in the top layers, right? And, and get some general chefs or, or bakers to buy your stuff, um, which Definitely. I think that is one of the advantages of the sub niches is it's, you're making it easier to get the initial sale and you can still sell within mm -hmm. the broader niches. Whereas if you start in the broader niches and the top layers, it's hard to even get that first sale sometimes. Um, and you, you could still appeal to the bottom layers, but I, I hope that made sense. Definitely. No, that makes total sense. I'm, I'm with you. So, I mean, based on this BSR, okay, this is just high level based, excuse me, based on this search results, you know, around 600 search, search results for pastry chef shirt, some great BSRs, some reviews. This is one I would definitely, I would, I would, have no problem making shirts specific to this. My next step would be, I'd want to learn a little bit more about Pastry Chef. One thing I like to do is I'll go into Google and I'll actually type in Pastry Chef memes. And I'll just look at some of the memes because the memes sometimes you can get like, kind of like an inside joke, yeah. right? That's kind of what a meme is. It's like making fun or an inside joke of like, what pest pastry chefs what do. What does the you know? audience find so funny? So you can kind of look at yeah, these. The, the target customer. Yeah, you know, and, and just learn about it a little bit. But I do think that there's opportunity here based on the demand and based on some of these designs. Some of them are really simple that mm. um, you could you could really expand upon. Like this one here, for example. This is just a the classic kind of retro graphic yep. with a, looks like that's some kind of cake or something, and it says pastry chef. I mean, if I was going to do something, I, I could I could take a design like this and I would come up with a better graphic, a totally different color pattern, maybe a different shape of that retro and, and some different fonts and test it out. And that's also a great one that would work on other products like phone cases or tote bags, right? Because people buy those things as gifts. You know, their son or daughter is going to be a pastry chef. Let's go visit them and give them a, you know, a little shirt or something like that. What are your thoughts on something like that, Philip? On, on the, where would you go if you were to what will be your next step? If you said, okay, I like pastry chef, what would be the next, yeah, next thing? Yeah. So do? the, the next step for me would be checking trademarks, which I know you've got TM Hunter open there as well. Yeah. And I did search or I, I might've done that when you were chatting and I didn't see anything for yeah. pastry chef or, or pastry by itself. But that's generally, so found a niche idea. If it looks promising, I would check for trademarks. Um, I do typically do another step of validation rather than just looking at Amazon. I would also, for example, check, you know, how much is there on Redbubble, on TeePublic, on Etsy, just to get more of a, an accumulation of different results. Um, because sometimes mm -hmm. the Amazon search results, I mean, you probably know this, they're a bit hard to, hard to trust because the numbers are all over yeah. the place. And like, like we said they earlier, are. there's random designs being pulled in that are not necessarily about a pastry chef. Uh, like we've got one there right. that just says bread. Okay, but that's a sponsored one, so that doesn't count, I guess. Yeah. So that's why I like to also go to other marketplaces and see, you know, is it a thousand results on Redbubble or is it ten thousand? And if if it was a high number, like ten twenty thousand, that would put me off a little bit. 
Um, so found the niche, trademark check, if that's clean, do some more validation. And then if I, I still feel like it's, you know, good potential, low competition niche, um, then yeah, I would do some research, try and find, try and understand the audience. Like you said, you can look at memes, yeah. uh, you can read up about it and then go and create right. a few designs based on, based on how, how I feel about it. If I think there's a lot of potential, I'd probably make more, more than 10 designs. Yeah. If I feel like the potential is low. Oh, so sometimes you'll start. Yeah. How many do you make when you enter a niche? Like if you, if you feel good about it, if I feel good about it, I'd go with like 30, probably 30 designs ish. Okay. It's not a golden rule. Um, and if yeah. it's like a low potential, in my opinion, then it's more like 10, five to 10. Um, do you, what do you normally do? Yeah, I'm in that same range. I would say usually 10 is a minimum just cause like my little system with the working with the designer, it's like batches of yeah. 10. Um, but if, if I feel good about it, or for example, going back to the solar eclipse one, I, I went like 30 or 40 right off the bat with that because I knew I had a short time window. I didn't have time to necessarily like do a bunch of testing. Mm -hmm. So I just said, I'm going to make, you know, 40 basically bulk scalable designs that are different, appealing different styles, you know? So yeah, I'm in the same range, 10 on the low end up to 30, 40 on the high end. And one thing I want to mention here as well is, um, the thing that we're saying about like low and high potential niches and creating less and more designs, it's never an exact science. Like oftentimes yeah. the one, the niche where I've entered, uh, uploaded 30 designs might not do as well as the niche where I've only put up five or 10 designs. Like you never know for sure until you've actually tried it with this sort yep. of research process. We're just trying to gauge, uh, is there potential? Is there demand? We, but un until you've dipped your, your feet in, like you never know. Um, at least that's been my experience. It's, it's never like exactly a clear. No, response. I fully agree. I mean, you, yeah, it's, there is no golden rule. It's a lot of it is you, you kind of make a, an educated assumption based on the data that's available to us. And then, but you really don't know until you start putting out some designs and seeing what, what works and what, what gets traction. Cool. So did you see any other ideas? Uh, from this niche? Or... I didn't see any specifically on this, but you know, another, another thing that I'll often do here, Philip, that might be helpful to anyone watching is, is sometimes I'll go in now I'll pull up chat GPT and I'll just ask it, say, um, uh, give me a list of similar professions to a pastry chef. Um, just to, just to get an idea on there we go. I know there's like a sous chef, right? That's, that's another type of chef, um, a chocolatier uh, cake. Mm, you know what I mean? Mm. Because I'm still in that same, I'm still in that same broader, we're in the broader cooking niche. Right. And then now we're kind of in maybe more baking and desserts, but you know, I would take some of these terms now, like this one, confectioner, confectioner. Mm. Confe I've never searched that. So I'll, I'll go back into Amazon, you know, and say, okay, now let me search uh confectioner and see if anything comes up that's a really good idea um so basically the the strategy is once you've found a, a niche whether it's a profession or a hobby mm -hmm. look for similar stuff like around that area because if if, if yep. this is if this has got potential similar topics might have potential as well that's definitely a good good idea like the cake decorator yeah. thing is also making me think uh, there will be cake decorators that specialize in weddings, right? For example, um, can you imagine that being a sub niche or a cross niche for that occupation? And yeah, the results are yep. fairly low. Yeah. So cake decorator, 120 cake results. Cake artist is another way to describe mm -hmm. it. Girl who loves cake decorating, uh, which I think this is a, this is this is a good design. I like that style where it's filling up a lot of the, um, you know, yeah. empty yeah. space. You've got a nice, that pink font really pops well. What do you think um, about the phrase? Cause I, th I think that one could cause rejections. Or how that has done. Yeah. Isn't just a girl who loves, isn't that, I know that one's, is that the phrase you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. I don't know if it's trademark, but I've, I've heard a lot of people have trouble with it. So I've just stopped selling it girls. Just a girl who loves, but, even if it was like a dangerous phrase, you can easily amend that and just say, this girl loves, you know, 
doesn't have to be that exact wording um, and you'd be, probably be fine. This is a clever, uh, this is a really good, good design. Yeah, this is, this is an example, guys, when we talk about, like, you know, think of a phrase or, or, or ask ChatGPT, come up with something. This is really clever. It says procrastinating. It's a verb. When you have a million things to do, but ignore everything and bake. That's got to appeal to somebody who's, you know, a mom. She's busy, the kids, the house, the work, you know, but she just is still baking because she loves to bake. Oh, my God. I Great love VSR. that. And you can do that for so many things because everything and everything ends in ing. So you could do procrasty, exactly. procrasty skating, procrasty. Uh, I can't think of ideas now, but that's a good one. You're right, Philip. You could insert, you take procrasty and then any, any uh, hobby or right that ends in ing, you add it on, put in some clip art or graphics, right? That are appealing to that. In this case, they got the whisk and the cupcake and the icing right, mm. for baking cookies. Um, that is a that's a great design. Uh, it's simple too. Look at look at the look at the phrasing and the keyword. It's not overstuffed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's it's that's a well done well done thing. What are you checking? Some other? Um... I'm just asking ChatGPT for similar ideas to procrastinate baking. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was Be going to say. Yeah, pull, because that's, that's another that. thing I want to mention about this evergreen niche research. What I do a lot of the time is even if, like. Sometimes you struggle to find actual topics, right? Like a job title, a hobby. Mm -hmm. But I think concepts like that, they can be a really good route to go down as well. You don't need to find a niche all the time. Sometimes a unique concept like that, that you apply to other niches mm -hmm. can be super successful. That's worked for me so often in the past um, because I've never seen that kind of pun and I'm guessing it doesn't exist in many niches. So some suggestions are procrasty knitting, procrasty gardening. Okay, it doesn't mm. rhyme as well as baking, procrasty baking, procrasty coding, but I'm sure. You probably need, because it's procrastinating, mm. two syllables, and baking is two syllables. So ask ChatGPT for hobbies that end in ing that are uh, two syllables, and then that should match better, yeah, right? That makes sense. Procrasty gaming. Oh, procrastinate gaming. That fits. Procrastic coding. Yeah, like, yeah, you could um, do a lot of stuff here. Um, and that way it's not copying either, right? You're not copying the design. You're applying it to other topics. And, um, yeah, yeah if, if you make the design different, like if, if you made it a vintage sunset design, which that original one didn't mm -hmm. have any vintage sunsets in it, did it? So, um so yeah, that's a good find. That's definitely something I would do now is create. Yeah. Create like 10, 20 sets. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the thing when, when we're using these sort of, you know, just, just on Amazon and just kind of clicking around and stuff, this is an example of what we've, what we talk about or when you, when you kind of stumble on things and one thing leads to another. So we started off with pastry chef. Then we looked at, then we looked at what cake decorating, right. And then cake decorating brought us to this great design about procrastinate baking and then now it's like how can we apply that concept because guys don't go copy that you're not going to you're not going to out compete that shirt yeah. anyway it's already got 33 reviews a great bsr but you can look at that and say wow i see what they did they're doing a pun they're doing a description and stuff and then yeah use that in some other niches and and, and find other creative ways that's what this person probably did and that's why they have such a good design they were the first one to come up with that and put it out there definitely and it is it is a major benefit if you can come up with good ideas like that, that are unique, that haven't been done before. Uh, many of them will probably flop, but if, if you get a good one like that to work, you know, you're the first to market. But sometimes you don't have yep. to reinvent the, the wheel and you can use an existing working concept, apply it to other niches where it doesn't exist yet, and you kind of have a similar yep. effect. So, um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I feel like we've we've exhausted this niche, but it, we found a good idea from it. And did, would you yep. actually cake decorator? Like how many results were there? Is that something worth, worth entering? Yeah. Not very many. Um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty low results. Um, and that does seem to be a term that, you know, I don't know if there's a better term if or a more, a fancier term, uh, but cake decorator definitely is in a lot of these Unreadable. listings. You know, because I, I feel like that's too low. Redbubble is only giving 300 results. 
right? And that's an open <clears throat> open platform. So that, sh that tells me, yeah, it's probably pretty low competition. Okay, decorator yeah. on Tee Public. let's see. Has eight pages, which is not a lot. That's interesting. You check those other sites. You know, that's something I don't really do, but maybe I maybe I should start doing that because it's it's it makes sense that you're getting. We all know Amazon can be like hmm. you said a little bit wonky with the results, but if you check the more marketplaces you check, the better kind of sample you get to really see well how much demand is there, how much how much you know how many different varieties of these of this niche hmm. are out there. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're selling on Redbubble or not. Um, it's just a, an extra step to validate. For ex one example that I always mention is disc golf. If, if you type in disc golf on Amazon, um, and I think if mm -hmm. you go to page three especially, you get like 60,000 results, which is mostly due to the fact yeah. that golfing is a big niche and that there's literal right. like golf clothing, what you see, see at the top there, like plain golfing shirts, right? So it's pulling in, on page one right here it says 1,000, but if you go to page three, it used to, yeah, it, it probably, jump. I probably jinx myself now, but it used to show 60,000. No, I, I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 60, but if you type 000. that in on Redbubble, again, an open marketplace where anyone can upload whatever they want, basically, uh, it's only 5,000 results. So are yeah. we competing with 60,000 people on Amazon Merch? No, right. probably, most likely no. not. And, yeah, and a lot of people get scared off by that, but you know, to your point, Philip. I mean, look, these are collared, <laughs> collared golf shirts. They have nothing to do with disc golf. And and the further you go through these listings, the more you're going to see shirts that are less and less relevant to what we're looking for, which are shirts about specifically disc golf. So, you know, it, it is important to check those numbers and stuff, but it's not always what it says because these aren't really. I mean, someone who's looking for a disc golf T-shirt is totally different than somebody looking for a blue collared golfing shirt. Yeah, you know. Definitely. Okay, so cake decorator seems like a good niche. So we found, we found a, a few good ideas already. Um, again, we can't guarantee that if you enter them, you will definitely get sales. But if you put up a, a few designs um, and give it time, that's another aspect with these evergreen niches. Give it time, then um, yeah, I'm sure there's definitely a good chance, um, especially for Christmas season. People getting gifts for different occupations. Yeah. Because I sometimes, and I wonder what it's like for you, I sometimes enter niches and I kind of lose hope because the first few weeks or months nothing sells. But then mm -hmm. a year later, I'm getting regular sales in that very same niche. Um, it just sometimes takes, uh, takes patience. How's that been for you? Same. Yeah. I mean, I have some designs that I have forgotten. I even uploaded yeah. them because it's been a year, a year and a half, and then one day it'll sell. And then a lot of times, yeah, it'll, uh, it'll become a, a regular seller. Maybe I sell one once a week or once, once every couple of days. Mm -hmm. And you, you just, like you said, you, you don't really know. I mean, we all want those designs where, or those niches where we can create a design, we put it up and we start instantly making sales. But at least in my experience, that's the exception, not the norm. It takes time. Yeah. And it shows. So I'm just it back. shows in my uh, in my community server. You occasionally it's rare, but occasionally you get someone sharing that they uploaded a design yesterday and it already sold within 24 hours, and that's kind of a, a celebration, like a big event, because it rarely happens, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, that that sort of thing rarely happens. I I mean I that that rarely I've had it happen a few times, but it's. It feels better. If, it all. feels better than selling something ten times a day. Like it's a, a nicer feeling to sell a design instantly after after it's uploaded, which says a lot, um, right, about its rarity. I would say. Yeah, and I think it's important too that we're showing that, like, you know, when it comes to niche research and and doing this is. There's no big, there's really no secret formula. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. You can use paid tools, you can use free tools. Some people would just very high level spend a few minutes because they say, I want to spend less time researching and more time designing, mm -hmm. right? And then other people will spend a lot more time researching because they're trying to really drill down and sub niche and find the perfect idea or concept for that particular niche. So, you know, there's many, many ways to find success in this, but um, it's, Sometimes it's unglamorous and, and it's not this big secret that, you know, 
Uh, at least at least I haven't found the big secret yet. Anyway. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I've been doing it for four years. So. Um, yeah. And that's, I think, what understandably a lot of beginners think when they enter the space and they mm -hmm. see the YouTubers, it's like, what are they hiding or, or what's the trick that I'm missing here about the niches? It's um, yeah. a lot of it is mainly just trial and error. <laughs> and uh, it's still this for me. I'm still trying out new stuff all the time whilst also doubling down on what's working uh, from my past tests. But the more yeah. you test, the better you're going to get, um, un unless you keep testing the exact same thing. <laughs> right. Nappy bar. Uh... That's, that's a cute mm. design. That's a well, funny I think one. capybara is quite a big niche. Yeah, yeah, it is. That's why I didn't. And that's one. the benefit of, uh, right there, that's the benefit of doing it for a longer time. You, you, you kind of right. build a library. You and I both yeah. know that. You yeah. build a library in your mind of what's already quite saturated. Um, yeah. As a beginner, you just, you have to go through it. Like we can't make a video about 5,000 niches that you can just skip. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but yeah. you know. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Taurus, do you do anything with the zodiac signs? You know, the different monthly. Um, I, I do not you know. know. I do not. Do you? I don't. Um, but I, I've see, I see a lot of those. I know those. Some of those are popular, and you know, some people really, really do pay attention to that stuff. Field day, field day shirt. Okay, so field day, I don't know if you guys have that over there, um, but field day here in the States is like a big day when it's kind of like a fun day at school when everybody gets together mm. and you play games and you do stuff. Uh, that's probably pretty good. It is, yeah. It's I think it's trademarked as well, to be honest. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Which? Yeah, I mean, those are these are definitely selling, but yeah, it's pretty competitive. It is trademarked as well, which... Is it? Uh, okay skip that one yeah there is a lot of shirts on amazon so again you could argue is it really dangerous for your account but i, I personally wouldn't use that keyword i wouldn't either yeah a lot of paddle up buttercup which yeah that's from pickleball isn't yeah it? so it's related to pickleball but it, it seems to me um to be like a, a long-term keyword that seems to be quite popular mm -hmm. which What's your opinion about this? Um, I sometimes would consider those like actual sub niches. If there's a long tail phrase that's doing really well within a niche, um, I've just mm -hmm. entered one recently, actually, in a, in a competitive topic. But I saw that phrase selling so well multiple times. I was like, okay, let's mm -hmm. try a few versions of this, upload it, and I've started to get sales. So would would you consider that sometimes in a, in a more competitive niche to try one one of those phrases? Yeah, a long tail keyword or phrase, absolutely. Especially because this is sorted by newest, right? It's still sorted by newest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've got a lot of new designs yep. in the pickleball niche with that phrase. So rather yeah. than creating, you know, another sunset design with a traditional phrase that everyone's already used, maybe try this new one that seems to be doing well. Right. And then you can, you know, if you type if you type that into the suggestion and it's it's suggesting it, Right, that usually means there's demand too. So what, what was the phrase? Uh, paddle up buttercup. Yeah, so look at that. I mean, it's on t-shirts, tanks, sleeves, ladies, men. Uh, thousand. That might be trademarked, I'm not sure. I'm, yeah, I'm just looking. It's There's a song called Buckle Up Buttercup. Mm. Mm. It's a bit close to that, isn't it? What do you think? Yeah, that's a little bit close. But, um, probably fine, but, but you know, I just, I'm pretty close. The cautious. YouTube video only has 800 views, though. <laughs> I don't know if that's the official one. Buckle up, <laughs> buttercup. But that phrase rings a bell. I don't know where it's from originally. Yeah, I've definitely heard that. I didn't know it was from, I don't know if it's from something bigger. Yeah. It looks like there's only a couple of those designs that are selling really well of the specific paddle up buttercup. Is that what it was? Paddle up buttercup? Yeah. Okay. I, th I think the song was a false alarm because there's nothing like official. So any, any BSRs or not really? Not really. I think that other design might have been selling better because it's not even coming up in that when I search mm. this. 
So I think that other Zion might have been just getting picked up from probably a broader pickleball, pickleball shirt, shirt. Oh, is this it? Uh, that looks like the design, but the uh, BSR Similar. is different. Oh, well, but it's something worth considering, right? Sometimes if you see a, a pattern Absolutely. within a niche, um, that could oh, be... Yeah. Uh, and especially if people are looking for it, right? If, if people are looking for that specific long-tail keyword, um, yeah. then again, we go yeah. back to the layers. Like we've gone down a lot of layers and then you can be, you have less competition, you can be found more easily, get the sale, yeah. and then end up showing higher in the search results for just pickable shirt, uh, which is the goal. Right. What about this niche, Philip? I'm curious, you're, what about the Christian niche? So this says, how can I pray for you today? Now, I know that's a big niche, but I've seen a lot of shirts because there's a lot of different shirts is, shirts that reference like, you know, chapters in the Bible or books in the Bible mm. and things like that, where you can really like niche and sub niche down. Do you have any experience in in that sort of? Because that's an evergreen. Niche, yeah, yeah. I imagine, in in right? fact, I do. And at first glance, I would say you know Christianity highly competitive niche. But we go back to the sub niche, and, and yes, you can definitely get sales mm -hmm. in it. Um, I only really have I think one design selling in the Christianity niche, and it's something I found through social media, like a like a meme. Maybe it was referencing a part of the Bible. I don't even know exactly what it is, but <laughs> I found yeah. it on social media, right? Yeah. And it resonated with the audience there. Um, and I created that type of design, that idea, and brought it to Amazon. I don't know if I was the first, but I'm one of the only people, and it started to sell uh, on its zip hoodie, which is a bit random. Okay. Um, but yeah. because it's such a specific design aimed at Christianity, um, it seems to be doing well, um, which I didn't expect. Again, sometimes just trying out yeah. something random that you find online rather right. than copying what's already on Amazon uh, can, can help. Yeah. Definitely. What about you? Have you got any set, uh, any sellers in this niche or tried it before? I have some that are really, really old and, you know, I really haven't revisited that niche. I have some that, that are just some of the popular, um, I guess, I guess phrases or, or references, you know, to the Bible, yeah. but they're, they're very old. In fact, they're those designs that I look back on them and I made them and I'm like, I'm embarrassed, like how <laughs> bad these quality are, you know, but that design just reminded me of what we were kind of the same thing as like the cooking and then, you know, pastry chef and cake decorator. You could do the same thing with the larger Christian niche. And then there are so many ways that you could break that down. And that there's a very strong demand for designs like that. Um, in that in in many of those niches i just saw one there hate from australia and i saw that earlier as well okay i know what that one is i didn't the reason i haven't brought that up that's from a social media online little <sighs> thing is it so there was are you familiar no, with that is one it, can you not sell it because <laughs> that's the main question yeah i mean i i probably okay. wouldn't I, I don't know let me tell you i'll tell you real quick i'm pretty sure this is from a famous or not a famous, but a, a, a someone, a, a social media influencer, mm -hmm. they were posting these videos about them making coffee and sharing like their day, you know, just putting it out there. And people just in the comments, you know how people can leave comments like on Instagram and they're just rotten comments. Well, people started to say, you know, sending you hate from Australia or sending you hate from wherever just to like beat this person down. But then it kind of reversed and it became their their account blew up okay yeah. so now and they make coffee now they have a coffee blend called hate from australia because now it's like this term that's like you no. know what i mean it's like ah, hate from australia but really they're kind of like a secret fan you know what i mean i don't know maybe i'm not explaining it right but that would i guarantee this is yeah fairly it's kind of like a slogan yeah, for 20. that influencer now it kind of become like their yes it's a it's a slogan from an influencer that started off as as a comment but now they've sort of like taken the haters and are literally turning it into the they make a, they, this person makes a coffee called hate from Australia and they got kind of famous. They went on some big podcasts like Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. I don't know if you know who that is, but they went on their show and talked about it and blah, blah, blah. But I, I personally wouldn't do that. That's a, that's a very short lived trend, you know, that's going to yeah. fizzle out. Yeah, I agree. And if it's linked to an actual product, then no, probably not. Yeah. yeah. Let me go to this real quick and let's see what else we can whip up. I know we can come up with one or two other good ones. Champagne. Detective. Detective. Uh, might be a little. 
There's probably specific types of detectives. Yeah. yeah. Thesis. Maybe something there. People who are working on their thesis, you know, that's like a uh, educational capstone achievement or something. There might be something there. Let's just see what comes up with that. Why not? That's probably not even the right term. Thesis. Okay, yeah. Defend thesis. That's what you do. Defend thesis. Let's look at the suggestion for that. Just out of curiosity. Uh, on, on in the search bar? Even just defend. Let's just start with defend. Because that's another thing I think oh, we've yeah. not really gone into much yet is the search bar. Oh, yeah, just the term. Sometimes yeah, if you have multiple right. words, just use one of them and, and it often spawns new ideas. Yeah. Um, defend the. Defend the police. Defend the republic. Defend the scared. Yeah, like some of them won't be a print on a man niches. But defend right. the police t shirt, I guess that's sort of an anti anti movement to the uh defund the police thing. Mm -hmm. Um so that's that's another thing. There's there's always going to be anti movements to any big social group. Um, yeah. But yeah. Something to bear in mind. Type in the individual words, try and get new ideas that way. Um Defend but for sigmatic mushroom coffee. <laughs> what? What's what's mushroom <laughs> coffee? Is that a thing? I guess that's that's a thing. Yeah, I've heard of we'll it. Type that in then. <laughs> oh yeah. Mushroom coffee. Let's just see. We've got mushroom. It is. Okay, yeah, it's for weight loss mug. For gut health, for bloating. It's yeah, I think it's like a it's a it's a movement of, you know putting mushrooms to get the therapeutic or not the therapeutic, but the, the benefits of mushrooms in your, in your morning brew. Let's see if it's a niche. I can't imagine that. Does that have a demand? Uh, powered by mushroom coffee. Does that have sales at the top? Uh, yeah, it's, oh, it's just in, in the millions. A little, maybe one. Okay. Not much uh, though. <laughs> not much specific to that. You know. So it's a micro niche, barely any results. Very micro. No, no demand. Yeah, oh, 111 shame. results. Oh. Ghost writer. Ooh, ghost writer. That's a cool one. Ghost. I literally just heard that term in a podcast today, and I didn't think to check it. Ghost. What? What? Ghost term? writer. I just listened oh, yeah. to the podcast earlier and heard that. Um, That's such a hard, hard thing to do, but it's another, another tip, right? Anything throughout your day, any random words that stick out to you that you hear someone say, try and keep them in the back of your mind and think, could this be a POD niche? I'm bad at that. Like so many ideas have probably gone past me because <laughs> I'm yeah. not, uh, I'm not listening good enough. I'm not making the connection, but. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I keep a little notepad on my phone. So if I'm out, if I'm just doing something and I see something, I'll just add it to that list. And, and, you know, you never know when you could go back and circle on it. It never hurts to just type. It doesn't cost anything to type in a term in here, you know, and just see what comes up. And those, some of the best niches I've found have been just fearlessly, you just jump in and see what's going on, like injection. I'm just going to type that in. I have no idea. It's probably going to bring up something related to medical, but I bet we'll find some other niche. Um, okay, plastic surgery, Botox. Me, Botox is probably trademarked, but... There's another buttercup uh, design there. Oh, puck, pucker up. Huh. <laughs> yeah, pucker up, buttercup. Ke I think that's the original phrase. What's maybe. ketamine? Is that a brand? H. Ketamine, yeah, that's uh, a medication. That's, that's like a painkiller. Yeah, you want to stay away from that. This is bringing up injection by like medical, but this is, what are well, they called? Hang on, there was a, an interesting one a bit further down. Uh, Polish, right, keep going. Polish by injection? What? Polish adult, by injection? Naughty not adult. Adult. So there must be some joke in there that we're not getting. Yeah. 
It's you never know what you're gonna come across. But those are those are great, right? Like here. random stuff like that. It's adult humor yeah. can do well as well. Uh, if, uh, Polish by injection shirt. Thirty-seven results. Uh, uh, and one of them's got a decent PSR. <laughs> it's really? probably not a niche. That, that's a micro probably not a niche, niche. that's going to make you rich, but. Um, yeah, we've found a, a, a sub-niche to Poland <laughs> with that. That's interesting. So Botox, there was a lot there related to Botox. Now, it didn't say Botox was trademarked, the word, but I don't know if that's like a... I have to do some more work. But there are there is some... I think there there's some opportunity here because this this is type tight or tying into that aesthetic kind of beauty you know people who do Botox and, mm. and things like that and some really good BSRs. Yeah, I think Botox is a brand, but you could still is it a brand? Okay, you so could I'm not still sure. I guess you could still play into this or target these people that are into I don't know what do you call it like face this lifting? one did. Let's talk about yeah. it. Um, that's a, I guess that's a gray area. It's, it's alluding to Botox. Yeah. But what are some of the other keywords in the title? Like, is there a niche related to this? Um, Aesthetics or esthetician. Okay. A E S. Let me search that. A E S. So this would be a, a hobby, or excuse me, an occupation, mm. right? It's low results for... There's a diff different spellings of it right? as well. There's one with just E, no A. Uh, beauty, magician, skincare, makeup artist. Uh, skin therapist on the right, 73K mm. BSR. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. And they spelled that esthetician with an E. I've never seen it spelled that way. That's interesting. Like you said, there. that's another one where... It, you know, uh, the search term like para professional, mm -hmm. you know, is, is another way to uh, enter in to, to a niche. But yeah, skin therapist, what is that? Therapist. Oh, this is a great example of the the terrible search results. So 8,000, right? I searched mm -hmm. on Redbubble, 85. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not 8,000. Is it no. 85 on Amazon? Maybe not, but uh, I'll, I'm going to check it with the Merchant Former tab thingy that filters out uh, just Amazon products. And it's 300 results with that one. So now we've got the just broad search, which gives us 8,000. We've got Redbubble says, what was it, 85. And then if we filter out Amazon Merch products only, or Amazon Merch t-shirts only, it's 305, which leads me to think it is probably 1,000 or less. Right. It's nowhere near the 8,000 is what I would guess. Um, I would agree. Which makes it a low competition niche. And there's mm -hmm. demand, right? There's demand. Absolutely. Some of these have, you know, reviews, simple designs, you know, like this one here. Just literally says skin therapist. It's got a good BSR. There's definitely some opportunities here. And there was another term, this, glow therapist. Ooh. So I'm not sure if that's another... Dodgy keyword though, they don't so, like the glow keyword, do they on Amazon? <laughs> you're right. Yeah. No, you're right. I actually did one the other day where I was uploading something in the coin mm -hmm. niche and I used silver in the title because uh, it was like a silver something related to silver yeah. coin and it's it's held up and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like still a review. You know, yeah, you gotta be <laughs> panic yeah. mode, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it happens to me as well occasionally still where it's like it, where you know the trigger word in your listing or you should know that word but you miss it and um yeah it goes under review uh, but you can't avoid rejections especially if you're uploading like hundreds of designs in a higher tier it just it happens how what's that like for you anyway like how do you because you are in a high tier you're uploading a lot of stuff how do you kind of assure or keep your rejections as low as as minimal uh, as possible I mean, we're, we're starting that process right now when we're before we're, you know, we're, we're finding something and then we're going and pulling up, you know, trademark hunt or tmhunt.com and stuff just to check some of those basic terms and see, 
always go in and checking to understand if it's a brand or not, like the Botox thing. That may not have been trademarked for class 25 shirts, but if it's an actual brand, and I mean, I know I've heard the word Botox, mm -hmm. it's a common term in our culture or whatever, you know, you got to stay away from it. So you've got to just really, um, you know, understand. On that, on that as well, if, if, you, if you don't know about like the background Botox, um, if you're not sure, even just Googling Botox, it doesn't make it clear, right? It just gives up an explanation. So what you can do is, is Botox a brand? That question gives mm, you the clear answer of saying, idea. yes, Botox is a brand name of blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you're ever not sure of a specific word, just type that question. That's a great um, idea. And what in terms of, do you use the auto translate feature for the other markets? I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't auto translate. Um, I actually don't even upload at all to the outside, the English markets mm. at this point. So I think I have it set where that won't Amazon automatically do it for you on what designs that have sold. Isn't there a setting? Yeah. So that? there is a setting where they will in the background, they will upload stuff for you, old listings that you already have live. They will enable some of the products, right. um, especially if they've sold. Right. And that yeah. to me, at least has never given me a rejection. Um, so I think right. I have that turned on as well. Um, but yeah, you're yeah. right. But most of the time as well, I'm, I'm, I take the careful route and it's just UK, US. Um, I have had a phase recently where I was pushing to all markets and it's, it's impossible to prevent rejections with that. Like it, it just happens. Um, I've had it, I've had it where a niche has cleared like 10 times in the past and then you do a new design with the same keywords auto translate it and it gets rejected. Like there's no, no preventing it really. So, yeah. um, if you want to optimize yeah. for, for safety, then I wouldn't use that feature. Um, you're going yeah. to lose out on sales, but, uh, yeah. Yep. I I'm, I'm in the same boat. Um, so Philip, this just now, so when we were looking at the esthetician, the skin mm. therapist, one of the terms was license esthetician. Mm. So I typed in license esthetician t-shirt and that came up in the search expander, low results. It's showing right now, 197. Then you see some other shirts that are not skin therapists, but you know, people who have achieved their license uh, because I think there is a test or something. So this is, this would be an evergreen and this would be, looks like fairly low competition, maybe not super strong demand, but there's a couple good sellers. Look, 163, look at that one, 49,000. That's a good yeah, seller. Lots of reviews as um, well. So it's got a good long, a good sales history, right? Probably 400 mm -hmm. plus sales in total. Skincare dealer. <laughs> That's a funny one. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there's another term, cosmetologist, uh, yeah. right? They're using that in their title and the brand cosmetologist. That's in, it's in this, it's related into this field. Obviously, Philip and I are not cosmetologists or. <laughs> well, that's my, that's my part-time job. <laughs> what are we talking about? Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. I didn't my know, smooth man. smooth skin. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's a good, good way to, uh, to find another sub niche or. Um, I guess it's kind of niching down, but it's, it's a way to target that niche. Um, that's a little bit different, Definitely. uh, wax specialist. Interesting. So yep. I think by now you probably understand the, the process. It was a bit, a bit rusty at the beginning. I wouldn't say rusty, but we were struggling a bit, but it's kind of like 20 minutes in, I think since then we've gotten into a flow state where niches and yeah. ideas just keep pouring. And I think right. that is where a lot of people fail is. Um, thanks to modern technology as well, they don't get over that 20 minute mark because there's so many distractions, right? Um, and they don't get into yeah. that flow state where you, you just, you get an abundance of ideas. Um, sometimes that just takes time. Um, and I, I get it. I mean, research isn't my most fun part of print and a man, so I don't do this on a daily basis, but, um, I, I hope that this kind of serves as a good example of, of what it can look like, like a realistic research session yeah. <clears throat> session. Now we definitely have a set of ideas and we can easily create between 50 or hundred designs to put up and test. And then if something sells, yep. we'll put up more, right? That's what I would do anyway. Right. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And, and just to add on to that, you know, there was a couple times where when we were looking at some of those terms and, and realized like, oh, 60,000 results or whatever, but then when we were able to find a secondary term and then when you were able to cross-reference on Redbubble or TeePublic, which one was it? it only had 85 yeah. results, but this one said 8,000. Mm. 
right? You can kind of put the pieces together and say, okay, maybe this, you know, if you, if you stay too high level, it can seem a little bit overwhelming or too much competition. But to your point, Philip, you got to, well, we're just, we're just clicking around. I mean, this was not pre-planned. We're just clicking around organically and, you know, you get into that flow. And I think there's some great niches here and, and hopefully it shows, you know, one technique that you can use to kind of bounce around free tools and, and come up with some ideas. Yeah. And one last question here, I can just see in the bottom left in my esthetician area, what do you think of that design or that phrase that is doing well? Mm, that's related. That's the, that's the Taylor Swift yeah. stuff, right? Do you, would you sell that yourself or would you stay away from it? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm boring. <laughs> I'm boring. And you know, I don't like to roll the dice on stuff. I wouldn't. And, and part of it is because I don't want to risk getting uh, related or a flag or anything like that related to Taylor Swift stuff, but also because I've seen, I know I can think of something else, hmm. right? I can still enter this niche without having to do anything that's even remotely uh, could be considered risky. You know, there's there's a lot of other opportunities and designs and ideas, fonts and styles. All these are on, uh, you know, this esthetician niche. Almost all of these are on darker shirts. I would experiment and put some up on pink, white, yellow. This is obviously a feminine related category. Mm. Why not start with that? You know, maybe maybe somebody is looking for a lighter colored shirt and they see that thumbnail and it's going to get you a click and design. So I wouldn't touch that, would you? The the In My Era? I wouldn't. I did. I did upload a few designs to one of my niches mm -hmm. that I was already working in. And it's such a tempting one, right? Because the phrase is doing well. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a yeah. gray zone. It's not her song lyrics. It's not a title of an album. Right. It's just similar to the title or the name of her tour. So yeah. that's where it kind of gets like, uh, is it okay? Is it not? And it's tempting right. because they're selling well, right? Um, so I've done it. Yeah. I've uploaded a phrase or a few designs. They were selling and then I chickened out because I noticed, and I made a video about this, I noticed designs were yeah. getting deleted, right? One benefit of the research tools is you can see, and, and you can't find this information on the front end of Amazon. You can see what's been deleted from Amazon. Mm -hmm. And granted, some of those deletions might be uh, an actual seller deciding to delete their own listing. But if you see a wave right. of the same niche, the same uh, phrase, chances are some of those are because Amazon banned them right or deleted the design yeah uh, and that's where i said okay like no I'll, i've deleted those listings by now uh it's not not worth yeah. the risk like sure you, you lose out on sales by deleting a design that's already selling but if you lose your account you lose out on all of your sales and i, and I think you know if anyone's out there listening and, and and you're new to this like try and set these good habits right like you know follow the terms don't avoid the stuff that could be controversial or fringe related that you know you might get flagged upon because it's a slippery slope you may do that and get away with it the first time or even the mm. second time but when we're talking about building a business and longevity of an account and stuff um, there's there's a lot of ways many many ways to be successful on this platform and you never have to get close to anything that would flag your account you know you don't have to um, so yeah yeah, sometimes taking the shortcuts, you know, it, it, it's detrimental to the long term aspect. Um, yeah. But they are tempting. And, and as you can see, like I've, I've shared this, I tried the design, right? Because I, I wasn't right. clear, like, is it okay? Is it not? It's not always an exact clear yeah. answer. And, and, uh, no, that that's a perfect yeah. one. Like you said, it's, it's very great. It's not you know, that's not a, dis a mar it doesn't say Marvel Comics on <laughs> yeah. it. You know, we know that's obvious. But these fringe ones where it's, it's you never know i mean it, it might be yeah. fine you know and it's you got to just kind of make mm -hmm. a choice and it depends how valuable you, your account is as well right if this is just like a side thing and yeah uh, yeah then I, I can understand why people would use the phrase but if it's like your only source of income but i definitely wouldn't like i wouldn't risk it um cool i think that was a, a really good session um, lots of ideas for niches lots of i think different ways to approach niche research totally for free. Mm -hmm. um, you can find topics, you can go further down into the topics, you can find concepts, design concepts, apply those to other niches. Um, and mm -hmm. yeah, I hope this helped you. And if you, if you don't know, Adam has got his own YouTube channel as well. He makes a, a lot of content about uh, print and demand, especially niche research. It's kind of his uh, or your area of mm -hmm. expertise, right? Um, there's a really good one recently, actually, that I really enjoyed about the sub niching. Like you did an example, a breakdown of the, the train niche. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. Adam showed 
I don't know, like probably like 30 different sub niches. And it's, it's a good visu- visualization of uh, what that really means. And you can apply that same process to your own niches as well. So check them out. Links will be in the description. And what else do you cover on your channel or what, what should people be look, uh, looking forward to in future? Yeah. Um, so print on demand is, is probably my biggest playlist. That's my main business, but I have some other businesses. I also sell on the Amazon influencer program and do some stuff related to like content creation, affiliate marketing. So, um, print on demand is my core business, but I have some other videos about other topics where I've been able to, you know, create secondary and third sources of income. So stuff like that, you know, if you're in this world of wanting to be self-employed, like Philip and I are and making some money, then, um, you know, I try and touch on the things I'm working on. And right now, um, a lot of print on demand, Amazon influencer program, and hopefully more, more stuff to come. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot for coming on the channel. Uh, that's Thank great. you, Philip. It's always a pleasure being on here, and I'd love to do this again. I think, you know, once we kind of get in a routine, we can really come up with some other great ideas for folks to follow mm, along with. Yeah, definitely. We could do it. Let us know in the comments, like, if you want to see this sort of stuff more often. Um, I can bring on more people as well, multiple people we don't know. Um, this, I'm sure there's a lot of ways to to revisit this sort of uh, video idea in future. So let us know in the comments if you yeah. liked it, if you enjoyed it. If you managed to make it to the end, um let, let's think of a comment that people can leave so we know they watched to the end what's something funny that we saw in these designs uh oh man what there was that one funny one we did see and we were like what and it was the polish polish, polish by brother. injection right <laughs> <laughs> let's just leave people will be confused right if they see that in the comments so yeah anyone who's yeah. watched to the end comment polish by injection confuse everyone else and you know that will definitely throw them off a little. <laughs> and we will know that you're a, a loyal visitor that didn't get distracted by their phone after 10 seconds. So thanks for watching. Uh, Adam, thanks for coming on. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Of course.